Hey Seeker, welcome back to the Existential Shift. This is the 13th element. When I give an extra oomph to the month or to life in general, take it or leave it. Thank you for being here. Anyway, so I was actually uh, prepping to shoot, film um, some, you know, the final classes to my Tarot Masterclass, which I will do after this because... I suddenly was inspired to do my 13th element video for now. Um, that's usually how it works. So, who's in a situation ship? No, I'm on a twin flame journey. You're in a situation ship. <laughs> not saying it's not a twin flame journey. I mean, hey, I don't know at all. Who does, right? But if you want to be honest, situationship i just i love saying this word because i i like it when like when humanity forms new definitions um and vocabulary in accordance to what it's going through language situationship it's not a situation it's not a relationship it is both a situation and a relationship a situationship okay i'm getting over this so 21st century love, huh? A moment of silence. <laughs> uh, it, it, a moment of silence. It's, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy. Okay, what do I think about it? How do I feel about it? This will be more like of a me expressing what I see. I don't know if it will necessarily give you a resolution. I hope it will. Sometimes knowing is, you know, half the solution when it comes to, you know, question marks are a, a, an itch in our brain and in our body. So sometimes giving an explanation helps ease the tension. So I feel like by doing so, some of you might find um, ease in this. So it used to be that love was simple for the simple reason that it wasn't love. It was a situation. It was a situation and we called it love. Humanity, society. We either um, made a business out of it, you know, and family ar arranged marriages. Um, and that was... A while back still exists today the next phase after that was the um, Freudian you know filling a void and helping you know fill out psychological needs um, I didn't get this from my parent now I expect to get it from my partner uh, a repetition of you know our ancestral expectation be it directly from our father or mother or be it from our cultural uh, expectation and that is more of a combination of the situation arrangement of love and then the next phase of healing love which is the psychology now I'm not bashing any of those stages in humanity when it comes to love because both are very important. Both were, both are um, the journey of our psyche when it comes to our search of what is love, which is what is source, basically. Love is source. And being in real loving union is being tapped into source and really aligned with your own higher self and with creation. I personally believe that everything goes back sums into somehow comes from and towards love if i have to choose one word to describe what this divinity is all about what this life is all about i would say love and us as humanity i think god is love and us as humanity as human beings part of our strive to you know reconnect with source you know, the journey, the journey towards this is with our relationships, with our loved ones, with our emotional uh, journey. And 
So we first started off as completely, you know, in the survival mode, right? We have to start from the root chakra before we get to divinity. So love was about arrangements through our history. And then we went further up into our gut, which is like our psychology, which is our, let's say, um, you know, where the ego resides and where the survival resides and where our basic needs reside that are above survival a little bit. Which, let's say it's like the um, uh, sacral chakra and the solar plexus. Um, and it's more of, you know, satisfying the psychological need and learning about ourselves, right? When you are with someone, you learn a whole lot about yourself from them because we are basically reflections of each other, okay? You, you see a lot about your own mechanism by observing the person that you're with. And not just about your own mechanism, but about your own fears. Projection, we call it. Okay, that was the next day, step. We're still there a little bit when it comes to love and relationships. Um, then romanticizing. It's all about the heart, right? The beginning of the 20th century. It's all about the heart. I don't want to be told who I need to get married. I want to have my own freedom of expression of the heart, how I feel, what I truly like. There, but there was still not much of awareness when it comes to what is self-love. So we would put it all on the other, okay? This person will make me the happiest. Before that, it was this person will help me survive, the arranged marriages, right? After that, it was this person will help me fix psychological issues, subconscious. We didn't actually say it to ourselves. And then it's like, okay, this person will get me closer to God because God is love and roman romance and all that. But we weren't exactly doing it right. We weren't exactly conscious of what it means. So we put it in the other, right? If you want to receive love, give love. That whole not very accurate notion. Give yourself love. <laughs> And that's, that's, what, that's the thing that will allow you to realize that you're worthy of love and be on a frequency of receiving love. Thus, love comes to you, okay? So from this romanticizing aspect of I need to completely sacrifice myself for the other and that is romance and that is love, but then you remain depleted, right? Because if the other is you and you is the other and you are the other, then by completely depleting yourself, you're not really giving to them. You're in a way actually depleting them in a very ironic, morbid kind of way. Because on the surface, seemingly you're giving, but you're taking away from them the ability to create it for themselves. So you're actually, de actually depleting them. It's like uh, giving someone a fish instead of having them learn how to fish. Um, and it's like constantly uh, drugging someone, always giving them medication, and then their body stops creating the thing that it needs in order to self-medicate, self-heal itself, because it's used to having an outside source given it to them, given it to it. So it loses the ability, it kind of get, becomes numb, loses the ability to create for themselves. And then if there's a breakup, then the person has remained depleted because they were used to receiving this love from an outside source. So basically by giving your all to someone, by thinking, oh, I will only give, I will only love thus, this will be love and divinity, and I will be loved, wrong notion, but that was the last thing we were on. So where are we at now? <laughs> Situationships. So let's say love is a circle and everything I just described is somewhere on that you know scale it's somewhere in that range of what is love it's either here or there or there or there or there and let's say this is the beginning right circle this is the beginning and this is the end because in circles all beginnings are also the ends everything is the center one on one um, in physics. So, if this is love, if this point here is love, divinity, the essence of love, uh, real loving relationship as opposed to a situation, as opposed to a situationships and all the things that I've described in, in between, then, okay, situation, right? Arranged marriages, survival, all that. Um, let's say, psychological connections. We call the love of the psychological connections. Um, and that in here, okay, in the scale. I know I look funny, I'm sorry. I should, I should, you know what, let me sketch this. Do I have a pen? I do. 
let's let's make it let's make it artistic I'm feeling artistic okay oh the thing always a book all right so that way you'll see it better A circle instead of me using my fingers. So love, love, lovey, 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 lovey. Situation, survival, arrangements, psychological connections. Right. I'm just giving an example. Okay. We're we're getting we're we're, we're progressing. We started at nothing. Right. We started in the beginning of us as humanity trying to figure this shit out. Psychological connections, romanticizing. Romanticizing, idealism, it's a bubble in the air, but it's not realistic. Once that bubble explodes, we're left with nothing. It was only air. Talk, talk, talk. I love you. I give you. It's you. You're the world. Shakespeare. Okay. I love Shakespeare. Don't get me wrong, but you know. And now we're here so close to the thing that is the beginning and the end, the everything, right? We're here. I'm gonna I'm gonna honor it with writing down situation <laughs> ship Hold on. I should have prepped for this. It was it just came into my mind like I need to do a video. Whatever. And then we're gonna call this Lovey dovey. Oh, my pen isn't working. Okay, whatever. You can imagine. See? All right. So we are here. We've come all this way. Now, after the romanticizing, we're learning self love, right? We're obsessed with self love. My journey, my healing, me being able to not be codependent and give everything for myself before I expect to give anything to anybody else or if I need to know to receive then I need to give to myself all that jazz that we're hearing now that I speak about that other uh, spiritual teachers speak of that books speak of and all good the rom-coms are now changing the romantic comedies are now changing into people who are more into their journey of self-realization and self-expression and self-love we're on the right track we're really really close but we're not completely there when it comes to the whole self-love thing because we're still carrying in our reptile mind all the past gunk of our survival mechanism our psychological mechanisms it, it it's I it's like projection leftovers okay it's like when we cleaned the house but we left out a few corners all right we used water but not enough soap so it looks clean but it's not ex exactly whatever there's no shade here we're all figuring this thing out that we call self love we're really really close we're learning we're evolving but this is the most frustrating step a second before the final when your soul is so exhausted and your heart is so overwhelmed with self-love and work but also loneliness this is a very lonely generation it's a very, it's, it's a very uh, unified and lonely at the same time because see what is going on right now. We have social media, we have the internet, we're connected to everything. But because we're not, it hasn't exactly clicked, this new age hasn't exactly clicked in all of our uh, layers and our full comprehension of it, we're still kind of through the screen. It hasn't yet completely tapped that whole me is a part of the collective and you are me and I am you and everything is, um, is, is one divinity, everything is one, everything is the divine. 
still very much so in theory. We are working on the real understanding of it. Okay, there's knowing and then there's understanding. So we're so close to it, we can almost touch it, right? You can almost touch my fingers. But there's still a screen separating. It's the illusion of separation because we are all unified. It's the illusion of unity because we're all through a screen. And it's always an almost. It's like you can reach, but... Almost, but it's, it's almost like trying to hug a ghost or, a, or trying to hug a, a, a hologram. You're still flesh and blood. That veil, that thin, it's getting really thin. We can really see through. We can see through it to the other side of what love is, of what divinity is, of, what, of how we truly can love ourselves enough to raise our frequency to a level of receiving that in a very pure, authentic way way that resonates both with our earthly self and needs because see all of this it's all valid it's all needed it's not like now that we're here that we're going to get here all of this is going to get canceled it all it will all um integrate if in every step of the way it was one step on its own getting here it will be an integration of all of it So it is the most frustrating times because we can really see the finish line, right? We can really sense how it can be, but we're not quite there yet. And that creates such a conflict and a dissonance. Like it, 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 it hurts, it itches, it makes us feel really uncomfortable. We are the most uncomfortable we've ever felt because we're our consciousness is so is really really expanding we're realizing things we're seeing things better but our reality is not not yet completely aligned with it so that frust that is such a frustration when there's a gap between what can and what is when you're all the way over there and you can't really see the finish line you know it's so amorphic it's so esoteric it's so abs abstract you're just living through life but when you you can really see it, you can really sense it, you can smell it. <sighs> These are frustrating times for love, but we've been closer than, we are closer than ever, which makes us feel as closer, as close as we are, we feel the further, the furthest, right? Because we're so close and we can't touch it, we feel all this, the complete distance. It's hard to feel how close it is. So, as the words of Daenerys Targaryen Stormborn, break the wheel. Love yourself so much that all your insecurities and all your projection on the other person and everything that they bring up in you that makes you anxious and fearful and worried, just shed it out. If not by actual sensation, then by faking it until you make it. Have your actions be a complete counterintuitive to what your fear mechanism wants to do. Your fear mechanism wants to run, force yourself in. Your fear mechanism wants in, force yourself out in case it's a bad relationship, for example. Like something that has to do with your uh, complete fears and projections that is only reliving everything that is negative and only reminds you of the things that you are insecure about. But notice, okay, this is the best practical example I can give. Uh, practical, sorry, um, advice I can give. For 
okay we're as i'm shooting this this is the the moon is in scorpio and we're going into in a couple of days to the full moon in sagittarius and it doesn't matter when you're seeing this if you're not seeing if you're seeing this a long time from now still relevant okay but in this time in specific it could really work because of the moon in scorpio that is you know scorpio's deep feelings and going and diving in and not being afraid of the dark and the shadow aspects so that which you resist persists right instead of and this is shadow work what i'm telling you right now instead of trying to deny your projections and your fears and your mechanism go all in if you're god forbid in a forest and there's a fire that is coming at you and let's say there's a whole lot of forest ahead if you run away from that fire it will catch it will catch up for sure you will not survive but when fire burns it no longer has anything to burn so it only progresses to where it has something to burn and here no fire so the only way out is in I, I will keep saying it forever instead of running away from the fire jump straight in it will burn really bad for a little bit but then you'll be in safe ground as opposed to a little bit of heat 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 done let it burn seeker let your projections and your fear burn for two three days or a day or whatever it is that you need or an hour if it's all that you need whatever but really go into it feel it don't just be conscious and cognitive and anal analytical about it feel the grief feel the fear feel the projection find a kink or a kick out of it find the thing tap into the place where you recognize that your soul chose this as a journey it chose all these fears it chose all these experiences it chose all these projections in order for you to realize what it is that you want right we can only learn about what we want by truly experiencing what we don't want how can we value freedom if we haven't been oppressed how can we value wealth if we haven't been deprived your soul went through everything that you went through and grieved what you've grieved and fear what, what you feared and, and and angered but what you angered for the sole purpose of expansion of you fully realizing fully comprehending not just cognitively but really on the in, on the inside of you what it is that you wish what it is that you seek who it is that you are by really showing you who you're not so go into that to make that final leap this is the darkest space right it's always darkest before the dawn it's almost it's always most tiring and most difficult in the fi final round of the tournament or of the marathon feel that pain and remind yourself this is a pain that I chose that is teaching me what it is that I truly want and when you will completely drown in it that's when you'll find yourself waking up on a safe shore instead of trying to trace your steps back because you feel like oh I'm so far away from it I need to go on this journey back to so very close seeker you're very close now I'm using metaphors and analogies and you know find your practical way of doing I, I, I you know I've given like my my practical advice on how to an actual in actuality
to the fire seeker into the woods into the fire that's that's how i believe we can break this um and and this is not about going against situationships and what and other, everything that i just described this is a valid part of the journey but it, i'm just like trying to shed light of, on how i see it just to maybe you know maybe it will help or if not then at least you got some entertainment <laughs> i'm so good at sketching circles Um, I'm going to shuffle my Gypsy Oracle cards and I'm going to give you full disclosure. They can be really cool, but they can be super dark and creepy. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to see what comes up as message for you guys. And if, and I'm not going to lie or change the message. So if it's a message that I feel like we can handle or that is positive, I'll keep it. If not, I'm just not going to show it to you and not going to take it. But not going to give a different message from these cards because I can't like, oh, we don't like it, so we're going to choose something else. No. Mm. How can I, what advice can we give our viewers, our seekers, to help make that final leap from, you know, to complete that self-love process? by accepting your own darkness and your own shadows and your own fears and going diving and running into the fire, into the mechanism, into the projection, into the fears, to be fully reminded of why it is that your soul chose to experience all that and what is the what is what is what is it about it that you really actually enjoy in a way that you won't even admit. You know, we, we get a kick out of anything. But we won't admit it to ourselves. There's something in it for you. With every pain, fears, projection that you're experiencing, how does it serve you? How do you enjoy it in a way? Be honest with yourself and be morbid with yourself and allow yourself to, to mock yourself in a way, to be like, oh my God, I do like it because of this and that. You know, uh, example, um, if I'm constantly am abandoned, by romantic love partners i'm not really abandoned i'm just replaying the abandonment that i've experienced as a child because by the age of six or eight everything we experience is our life you know this is our life and then we just keep the brain just keep recycling it so even if the reality is that or not that doesn't matter that's how we perceive it the way we perceive the world or the world has perceived itself to us by the age of eight or so so, when I'm feeling abandoned, I'm actually really enjoying the aspect of um, telling myself and the world that I'm the one who can do anything and everything on my own, and I can push through the loneliness and being alone in the world, and that makes me such a hero and such a spiritual warrior. For example, I get to tell that to myself, I get to be that, you know, and that is empowering in a way. Right? That makes me the spiritual warrior that, you know, that carries everyone, but no one carries me. I get a kick out of that. That's kind of cool. That's how it serves me to see all my situations, all my situationships as potential abandonment because that will allow me to maintain that narrative. Cool. I love being that. That's what I mean by going deep into it. it like, only shuffling, shuffling cards just bring it up and bring it out in me. Okay, I think I think the cards just gave it to me without showing a specific card. I hope that makes sense to someone, to several someones. No, and no card fell, so I guess, oh my god, this is perfect. So I was about to just show you how pretty they are, and the card at the bottom of the deck, and I'm definitely going to take that as our message. The dog faithfulness. Whatever your situation ship is, whatever your projections are, whatever it is that you're coming with to this video, 
You and three three three. I'm looking at the clock now. It's three three three. Oh my god, goosebumps. This looks like my doggy a little bit of his colors all over. Those of you who know me know I lost him uh, six months ago. Anyway, there is camaraderie. There is a bond. There is the best friend. There is faithfulness. Just open your eyes to it, seeker. And also, this could be an advice to be that yourself. But everybody, everybody take what you take from this. Okay. Let me know what you thought about my sketch. <laughs> um, I'm going to upload on my online tarot master class the remaining, there's like three more classes that I want to upload. I'm going to upload today um, how to shuffle the cards and, you know, and also base. Oh, actually, no, I'm going to do today um, uh, interaction in the major arcana and with other tarot cards between the cards. And then I'm going to do shuffling the cards and basic readings. And then I'm going to do advanced reading. And then, then I'm going to do an epilogue. So we're really close to the finale. Uh, it doesn't matter when you're watching this. It's an online tarot master class and you purchase the classes and you see them whenever you want to see them. You can either stream it online on Vimeo or you can download it to your PC. If you choose the buy all option, obviously it will be more affordable. But then keep in mind that I recommend to watch it chronologically and keep in mind it's a blue pill, red pill kind of thing. It's a life changing process. Uh, it's a very shamanic, shamanic journey. So if you just want to know about a few cards that came out in your recent spread, Choose the videos of the cards that you want to know about. If you want to become a Torochi and a Cartomancer and really receive my knowledge of the tarot and learn how I do what I do, because I connect different, um, you know, occult systems and different um, 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 you know points of view on the tarot from different different times and different cultures, and then I give it my own extra oomph um, and spiritual existential shift so if you connect with how i do things go check it out I'll, i will link it below um it's been a journey this is my 14th year of doing tarot and i'm I've, and this tarot master class was a journey since i've initiated it of 14 months and you know i guess 14 is meaningful and that 14 is the temperance it's the number of alchemy um, yeah, so I just wanted to share that with you guys, and I will link everything below in the information in the, descrip in the description box. Okay, thank you guys so much for being around with me. I love you all, Seekers, and I will see you soon in the um, Extended for July.